We finished off our last video with the following example, where we used our exponent laws in order to recognize a difference of two squares, factor that out and cancel out common terms in order to simplify our expression here into this final answer. In this video, we're going to go over some more exponential expressions and exponential equations, and we're going to see that we can use our same exponent laws to solve rational exponents, and in the next video, exponential equations. So let's go over a few examples of rational exponents. Let's say you were given the following expression, 0 0.25 to the power of 1 half. Now the first thing that we want to do is convert this into its fraction form so that it's easier for us to deal with. So we can write that down as 25 over 100 raised to the power of 1 half. And already we can simplify this itself to make it a little bit easier to deal with. So we can actually recognize that if we divide both of these by 25, we're going to be left with one quarter. That's because 25 times 4 will give us 100. So that is the same thing as 1 over 4 to the power of 1 half. Now whenever we have something like this where we have an exponent that is a fraction, we have to try and think of ways that we can convert the numerator and denominator into forms where when we multiply them out we can easily cancel out this fraction. So let's try and convert 1 quarter into a form where we have two numbers that are going to be raised to the power of 2. Because if we have this form where we have two numbers raised to the power of 2, when we're raising that all to the power of 1 half, we know that we're going to multiply this 2 by the 1 half in each case. And we're going to end up with 2 over 2 for each of these. And then that will become 1 because 2 divided by 2 is 1. So how can we simplify 1 quarter into a form where it is just two numbers raised to the power of 2? Well, we know that 1 squared is still equal to 1. So we can write down this 1 as 1 squared. And we can write down this 4 as 2 squared. And again, this is the same thing as 1 quarter because this is just 1 squared, which is 1, divided by 2 squared, which is 4, so 1 over 4. So now that we've converted our 1 quarter into this form, if we raise that to the power of 1 half, through our exponent laws, we know that that's going to be the same thing as just 1 squared to the power of 1 half divided by 2 squared to the power of 1 half. So because where we have the brackets and we are raising the exponent to another exponent, we can just multiply these out. So we're going to be left with 1, 2 over 2, divided by 2 to the power of 2 over 2. And that is exactly the same as 1 half. Let's do another example. Let's say we had 3x squared raised to the power of 1 half multiplied by... 3x to the power of 4 raised to the power of 1 half. So we know from our exponent laws that this is just the same thing as 3 to the power of a half times x to the power of 2 times 1 half is going to be 2 over 2. That's multiplied by 3 to the power of 1 half again. And x to the power of 4 times 1 half is going to be 4 over 2. And so that can be further simplified to 3 to the power of a half times x, because 2 over 2 is just 1, times 3 to the power of 1 half again, and x squared, because 4 divided by 2 is 2. So this simplifies to just 2. And now one thing we can recognize is that we have common bases here. We have common bases here, and we're multiplying. So again, applying our exponent laws, we can further simplify this as, well, let's write down our base in the first case, which is 3, and we're going to add our exponents. So we're going to add 1 half plus 1 half. And that's going to be multiplied again by x raised to the power of 1 plus 2. 
So this is simplified into 3 because 1 half plus a half is just 1, so it'll be 3 to the power of 1, which is just 3. And x is going to be raised to the power of 3. So the final answer is 3x cubed. Now let's say we had the following example. 8x to the power of 12 times y to the power of 6 and raise that all to the power of 1 third. Well, this is going to be just 8 raised to the power of 1 third times x raised to the power of 12 over 3 because we're multiplying 12 by 1 third times y to the power of 6 over 3 because it's 6 times 1 third. And both of these exponents can be simplified so let's just write down our 8 to the 1 third again. We have x to the power of 4 because 12 divided by 3 is 4. And y to the power of 2 because 6 divided by 3 is 2. And now what we have here, let's try to do what we learned in the previous example. Is there a form that we can write down this 8 in so that it's something raised to the power of 3? Because in that case, if we're raising that to the power of 1 third, the 3 will multiply here to just give us 3 over 3, which is 1. So how can we write down this 8 into a form where it's something raised to the power of 3? Well, we know that 2 raised to the power of 3 is equal to 8. So we can write down our 8 as 2 to the power of 3, raise that to the power of 1 third, and now what we're going to be left with is, well, let's write down the rest of our equation here. And so now what we're going to be left with when we calculate this is 2 to the power of 3 over 3, which is just 2 to the power of 1. So our final answer is 2 times x4 y squared. Let's go over one last example today. Let's say we have 2 to the power of x minus 2 to the power of x minus 1 divided by 5 times 2 to the power of x minus 2 to the power of x. Well, when we see an exponent like this, we can actually use our exponent laws to manipulate a term like this into a form by actually working backwards from our exponent laws. So we know that when we have the same base and we are multiplying, we are just going to add our exponents together. So this term right here can be written down as 2 to the power of x multiplied by 2 to the power of negative 1. Because if we were solving this using our exponent laws, that would be the same thing as just writing down our base of 2 and adding our exponents. So that would be 2 to the power of x minus 1. So that's exactly what we have here. So we can write this down in this way. And then we can keep our 2 to the power of x from here. So this is just another way of writing down this same question here. And now one thing that we can do with both our numerator and denominator is to take out common factors. So let's say we took out um, 2 to the power of x from both the numerator and the denominator. So if we factor out 2 to the power of x in our numerator, we're going to be left with 1 minus 2 to the power of negative 1. And we can just validate that that's correct because if we multiply this out through expansion, that's going to give us 2 to the power of x minus 2 to the power of x times 2 to the power of negative 1. That is exactly the same thing that we have here. And we can do the same thing with our denominator. So if we factor out our 2 to the power of x in our denominator, we're going to be left with 5 minus 1. And that's because, again, if we expand this out, that's the same thing as 2 to the power of x times 5, which we've got here, minus 2 to the power of x. So that's exactly this expression here, just factored out the 2 to the power of x. 
And now we have a common factor in both the numerator and denominator. These are going to be able to cancel out and we're going to be left with one minus, so two to the power of negative one is the same thing as one half divided by five minus one is going to be four. And if we're trying to figure out what this is, well, we can convert one into two over two. And that's the same thing as one. So two over two minus one over two is going to be equal to one over two. It's all divided by four. And one half divided by four is the same thing as one half times one quarter. And that is equal to one over eight. And that is going to be our final answer.